I grew up in a tiny town in California, and I was always just so amazed at, you know, my grandfather, especially Grandpa Smith, the old World War II vet. And he was the one that always taught me little lessons in life. My dad was a Vietnam vet. He didn't talk a whole lot about Vietnam or what he'd experienced. But you could just see that, that sense of pride in everything he did and, and reflecting back to his military experience with us boys. From the get, I just wanted to serve. I wanted to follow the tradition of my family and just do my part to give back to this great country. Dad told me, look, right now our nation's at peace. We're, we're not really doing a whole lot in the world, but there will come a day. It's like, it might not be tomorrow and it might not be in 20 years. But if you sign to, to go into the military, know that that day might come that you'll have to go serve and you'll experience and see things that you'll never forget. I had done two deployments to Iraq and one to Afghanistan. When we first arrived at Cop Keating, I just remember looking straight up in four different directions and just thinking, what the hell, who would put this thing here? When you read the military doctrine of defensible positions, this was the exact opposite. We were there for three months before the attack happened. That morning, October 3rd, I was still sleeping at the time, about six in the morning. And as soon as you heard those rounds come in, you just knew it was you know, a whole different ball game. Everywhere you were walking, you were having rounds every which way. Explosions were constant. These guys were committed to totally taking us all the way out. Within the first hour of the fight, the enemy was inside our camp. As Command Outpost Keating began to fall under enemy control, Staff Sergeant Romache knew that lives would be at stake if he did not act quickly. 150 yards away on the western flank, Sergeant Gallegos and four other soldiers were pinned down in a Humvee, trapped by relentless enemy fire. Initially, when Gallegos was up there on that western flank in that Humvee and had basically exhausted all their ammunition, and they were just sitting there taking a beating. And it was one of those, if we don't get up to Gallegos or get them out of there, they ain't gonna make it. And I went into the barracks and I grabbed Specialist Gregory and we tried to sneak up and around with a machine gun to give him support. The enemy was able to set up an RPG and fired it right into the generator we were using and blew me over onto Gregory. I remember looking at him and picking him up after I got off him and giving him a quick, quick pat down and asking him if he was okay and he said, yep. I think I'm good. So I told him, hey, just take off running. I'll cover you. Sergeant Rasmussen came up to me and he looked at me and he asked if I was all right. <laughs> I told him, yeah, I think, I think I'm fine. I'm good. And he looks down at my arm and he's like, dude, you, you've got a hole in your arm. I look and it's like, yep, <laughs> crap. And I move my hand and I'm like, well, I can still, still walk, talk and, and shoot. I'm, I'm still good. Hart came up to me and he's like, hey, Sergeant Rell, hey, we found some more 50 cal ammo. I want to take a couple of guys. I think we can get up to that, that other Humvee. Uh, we can reload that 50 and we can push over to, to Gallegos. And I told Hart, I'm like, brother, I just got blown off the generator. Um, I can't protect anything to the right of you. We, we can't set in that, that north flank security. We just kept kind of going back and forth, and I, I realized that looking at Hart and listening to Hart, there, there was nothing I was going to ever say to him that was going to get him to change his mind and, and not think about taking that Humvee to go get Gallegos. Hart left out the, the back door. And, I knew that was going to be the uh, last time I ever seen him. Uh, 
I knew we'd lost Kirk. Pretty sure we'd lost Hart and we'd lost Gallegos and, and Larson and, and Mace and Martin and, and Carter. I said, hey, need some volunteers. A freaking counterattack is what we're gonna do. I have five guys stand up. Raz, Delaney, Danley, Sergeant Miller, and Jones. So we pushed out. We were able to recapture the ammo supply point, push the enemy off that position. Bunderman calls me on the radio and says, hey, brother, you won't believe this. We still got guys alive. Sergeant Larson and Carter are uh, still alive. Mace is badly wounded, but he's still alive. Larson and Carter are going to try and grab Mace. And as we coordinate the airstrike and you're covering fire, they're going to try and bring Mace back to the aid station. I said, yeah, we can make this happen. They bring in the, the bomber, starts dropping munitions. We launch out the front, set our support by fires, and start talking our machine guns back and forth up on the mountaintops. Larson and Carter and Mace come around the ammo supply point and make it to the aid station. Larson started kind of giving me the details of what had happened up there where he had last seen Gallegos at, told us that Griffin's body was just outside the Shura building. They'd passed. And I called up to Lieutenant Bunderman and said, hey, we, we know where one of our fallen is. We're going to go extract him. I used to tell my guys, we're all going over together. Um, not everyone's coming back. Meaning alive. But everyone is coming back. You just can't leave. Can't even think about leaving someone behind. Uh, no matter what the cost. Now, throughout history, uh, the question has often been asked, why? Why do those in uniform take such extraordinary risks? And what compels them to such courage? The Medal of Honor is not often given when things went well on a battlefield. It tends to come at a price, and heroes are often revealed. Some say I'm a hero, but it doesn't make sense because I got to come home. Eight of my brothers fought to survive for a place we had called home. And more importantly, they fought for their comrades. And in the end, they gave their lives in that defense. They are the real heroes here today. I'll wear it with dignity and humility in their honor. I vow to respect their memories and carry each of them in my heart for the rest of my life. You can't go into a fight thinking, I might not come out of this. Uh, you, you gotta go there and without doubt in your heart, just know that you're gonna give it everything you got when you've got teamwork driving the fight, you're unbeatable, no matter what the odds.